So let's look at receiving. As I've already said, it's inherently vulnerable and it's an inherent human need. We need times when we can be the recipient of someone's care and attention. We need times that we can put ourselves first and there's no substitute for that. So what do we do if it's vulnerable? Well, our time-honored way to deal with that is to just not go there. We keep ourselves in the giving role all the time. It's vulnerable and it's risky. We risk acknowledging that there is in fact something that we want. That's risky right there. We, we risk, when we do acknowledge that there's something we want, we risk, first of all, not getting it. We risk uh, ridicule, disappointment, um, someone thinking that that's the wrong thing for us to want. You know, all those things are risky. And we also risk feeling wonderful. We all have a limit to how wonderful we are comfortable feeling before we hit our self-doubt. We all have a limit with how much of a gift we are comfortable receiving before we hit our self-doubt. And those two are very much related. So when you when you're receiving what you want and it's touching your heart and you're enjoying it, you risk that feeling of wonderful satisfaction and validation and acceptance. And so you run into your doubt, you run into your guilt, you run into your shame, and you run into your gratitude. And if you feel enough gratitude, that is if your gratitude fills you up enough, there will be tears. Pretty much guaranteed. It's just a question of how much gratitude it takes for the tears to fall over the top. And they will. No wonder we avoid receiving. It's just too risky. So, so again, if you want to avoid receiving, just stay in the giving half of the circle all the time. Or mix them up so you can't really tell what you're doing. And that will also serve to keep you out of the vulnerability of receiving. So there's two quadrants in the receiving half. There's the taking quadrant in which you are receiving the gift of access. You're being allowed to play with your partner's body. And there's the other quadrant of receiving or accepting, which is what I usually call it at home, accepting quadrant in which you are receiving the gift of your partner's touch in the way that you want. What happens for both of those is that there's a couple things happening. One is the sensation, either the sensation in your hands while you're feeling in the taking role, or the sensation on your skin that you're, when your partner's touching you. There's a sensation of it that's pleasurable. There's also noticing that this is for you. This person has set aside their preference for the time being and is putting your preference first. And that combination is what sort of clicks in both of these so that you really get it, that it's for you. And those are very often the, the part that makes it um, sort of tender-hearted and um, yeah, touches your heart. What's true about receiving is that it's very often difficult to um, experience that it's for you. And I'll talk about that in each of the separate quadrants, why that is. But um, when you do believe it's for you, then you act like it's for you, which means that you ask for what you want you take the time that you need, you change your mind. When you've had enough, you stop doing it. And the, the degree to which you are not doing those things, to that degree you don't quite believe it's for you. And we'll talk about that in the other, other videos. So when the receiving half of the circle is difficult for you, what happens is that you either avoid it or you dilute it so you can't really tell. That means you don't ask for what you want or you don't notice what you want or, for you, got, or you forgot how to notice what you want. Um, and when you don't ask for what you want, your, your option is either to just kind of starve or 
to grab and sneak and get what you want some other way without actually acknowledging it. Also, if it's difficult, you want to have some connection with people, and so you give, 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 because that's your only way that you know how to make a connection with people. In which case, your giving is not really giving, but your giving because it's an effort to get something back, some, some kind of connection, some kind of acknowledgement, um, some kind of appreciation. Whereas when you actually learn to receive, you get that in a direct way, and it's very clean, and it's very satisfying. There's no ulterior motive in your giving. So learning to receive is really crucial in being clear about your receiving. And of course, it feeds a part of you that nothing else can feed. What can be surprising about uh, difficulty receiving is that it can be just as hard to live with the person who can't receive as it is to live with the person who can't give because it just stops any of that flow from having. It's very difficult to sort of get around the wall that you put up when you can't receive. When receiving is easy for you, you develop integrity and clarity about the fact that there is, in fact, something that you want, and that as you take ownership of that fact, um, it's much easier for those people around you to decide is that something that they're willing to give you. And so you develop this um, integrity and a great deal of respect for other people's boundaries and limits about what they're willing to give you or not. Uh, it's very humbling and it also develops a kind of graciousness and gratitude about um, receiving the gifts that you do receive. It's very humbling. It touches you. And it feeds you in a way that nothing else can feed you. And as I think I said elsewhere, it's learning to receive that enables you to be a better giver. In the first place, now you actually have something to give, and now your giving is not a, um, an avoidance of receiving, and it's not a sneaky way to get something back, but it becomes very clean and very clear and effective and satisfying on both ends of the flow. So that's the receiving half of the circle. In taking, you're receiving the gift of access. In, in the receiving quadrant, you're receiving the gift of your partner's action. In both of those, you get to learn that you do get to have it the way you want it, and what you want matters. So that's receiving.